Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I will be explaining to all of you how the spring locks in Five Nights at Freddy's actually work. First of all, before we begin, we have to go back in time and find out who made these. Well, those two culprits would be Henry Emerly and William Afton. These two mad geniuses made the spring locks so their employees could wear the suits to perform as well as use the suits as animatronics to perform by themselves. So, now that we got the introduction out of the way, here is how the spring locks actually work. The spring locks are tiny spring-like adjustable metal materials, hence the name spring lock. The spring locks are placed inside of the animatronics everywhere, mainly like the legs, arms, face, chest, and back. These are so if a human needs to get inside the suit, they can decompress the spring in order for them to climb inside. Once the person is finished with the suit, then they need to carefully get out of the suit. This is because something as minor as movement would set off the spring locks, and ultimately they would all tighten up and stab you through every location that there is one. Not sure why Henry and William thought this would be a good idea, but we aren't talking about them today. Once the person successfully gets out of the spring lock suit, then the suit can be safely tightened again in order for an endoskeleton to be inserted and be able to perform on its own. There are some very bad aspects of a spring lock though. It may seem very convenient, but as I stated there are very, very big flaws in its design as well. Remember in Finance of Freddy's 4, when Michael Afton and his friends lifted the crying child into Fredbear's mouth, and out of nowhere he bit down on his head? Yeah, there is a reason for that. So, since the crying child was crying, that set off the spring locks inside Fredbear's suit, which made the spring locks tighten and bite down on his head. Yeah, moisture causes these spring locks to go off. Even something as simple as sweat will make these suits go off. Maybe William and Henry were not the so-called geniuses that many people thought of them as. After William Afton committed these crimes inside of a spring bonnie suit, which so happened to be a spring lock suit, his sins caught up with him in Finest of Freddy's 3, where we see him running away from the spirits of the children that he killed. Then he decided to hide inside of the spring bonnie costume. Why you ask? I don't even know. Maybe he thought since he killed the kids in that suit, he could get away with it because they were scared of him if he was inside the suit because that's the suit that, you know, he killed the kids in. Or maybe he just thought he was, like, invincible or something. I don't know. Don't ask me. Well, anyways, since this was an old forgotten restaurant, there were many holes and damages inside of it. And some of that damage happened to be right above William Afton when he got into the suit. Then this happened. Yeah, Afton got spring locked, just like his son, because of the water in the building. All of the metal parts of the suit tightened and compressed inside of his body. This is obviously extremely painful and not a good way to go. Afton then died by bleeding out on the floor with nobody there to help him. Also, I want to point out that the spring locks from Five Nights at Freddy's franchise are not real. So next time you go to your local Chuck E. Cheese or Showbiz Pizza, you won't have to worry about seeing one of your favorite mascots on the floor in a pile of blood. According to Google, this is actually what spring locks do. Well, a spring lock is put simply a device that can lock in place using a special spring and lock mechanism. These devices actually exist in real life. Spring locks can be used to firmly hold various things back into a certain position. So obviously, these spring locks in the real world are nothing like the spring locks inside of Five Nights at Freddy's. Thank God that these aren't real, because I could only imagine how these would have been used in medieval times. If they were real and around back then? Another thing to point out is after the Bite of 83, the spring lock suits were retired, since they were very dangerous. So that's the reason why Fredbear and Spring Bonnie were both trapped and never to be seen on stage after that. 
Here's a picture of how a spring lock actually works. So on the outside of the suit, you can see a hand crank. That crank is used to tighten and release the springs off of the suit in order for someone to climb inside and climb outside. It's pretty easy to tell that there isn't just a single spring lock. No, 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 no. There are probably around 50 in the entire suit. So the thought of those metal pipes going inside your body while turning and grinding would not be the greatest thing to think of or to experience. Here is a little animation that is very well known through the Finders of Freddy's community so you can better understand it of how we would look like if you got spring locked. This is not my video, I do not own it. Whoever made this video, their link will be in the description. And that's about all we know about spring locks. They are very deadly and convenient at the same time, but I'd rather not use them personally. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, please hit the like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, and comment down below. Leave me some video ideas, because the next video idea that you guys put down that I like in the comments, I will pin that, and that will be the next video. So remember to do that, guys. All right, I'll stop taking up your time. And I'll leave you with that. Have a great day, everyone. Peace.